It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to cover a, a really cool application called Watchtower. Um, I've kind of put it off because for a long time, maybe I misunderstood, maybe they've added this functionality now, but it, it, what it does is it watches your Docker containers and when it sees that there's a new version available, it will update them for you automatically. Now that sounds really cool, that sounds like, wow, you know, I run 30 Docker containers, that could save me a lot of time going out and checking if there's new versions and then having to update them and all that kind of stuff. My thing with updates with software that I'm using on a regular basis is that I don't really like it to update automatically because when it's functioning well, I like it to just keep functioning that way. So I like to, I'd like to know that there's updates for a lot of my stuff, but not really just have it automatically update. Now there could be things that, you know, if it updates and it breaks something, it doesn't really matter to me, I can come fix it. But I'm one of those people that when I sit down at the computer, I don't want to fiddle with it for 45 minutes before I get to do whatever it was that I was going to do. I want to get started doing what I was going to get started doing. So um, Watchtower was, was a cool concept to me, but with the concept that it also just updated things for me and didn't really ask me, I, I didn't like that. Um, I started looking into it. And I do see that they have options to actually just notify you that there's updates available and then you can decide if you want to update those those images or not. So we're going to kind of go through this today. We're going to get it set up and running and then we'll get out there and actually start looking at how to how to use it. Now, if you're somebody who's saying, I don't care if it does it automatically or not, here's what you need right here. This is the command you would run to get it running on your Docker system. Here's the Docker Compose if you prefer that. It's very short. There's not a lot here. It's really just run it. It's going to look at your docker.soc to see what all Docker containers you have running on the machine you're, you're, you're putting it on. And then it's going to start doing its thing. Um, but if you want to actually set it up so that you have some control over what it's updating and set up some email notifications and things like that, there's a little bit more to it. So we'll get into the install and how to set it up right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So there's a really great introduction section here and it actually runs you through an example setup of what it will do if you just run it straight up like I, like I showed you in the introduction video. Um, so they give you this example of this CenturyLink CLI application and it says every few seconds uh, Let's see, let's see seconds, let me make sure I'm not miss uh, every few minutes, sorry, every few minutes Watchtower will actually go out and pull down the new the image and compare it to the existing image. And if the image they pull down is newer, then it will use the same Docker run command that you used to start that that software in the first place um, and, and just basically restart it with the new image to make a new container. Now that's great because if if the software you're running doesn't change the way their Docker run command works, then there should be no issues. But occasionally new environment variables get added or new features get added, new flags, things like that. So you could be missing something. It could be something that changed. So again, you have an, an opportunity for breaking changes. But if the people who are developing the Docker containers that you use are very consistent, then that shouldn't be an issue very often. But again, it's something to be cautious about. So here on the left, you can just navigate through their um, information, which is great. And of course, I'll have links in the show notes in the description for you guys. Uh, but if we look at a usage overview real quick, you can kind of see here's their base uh, Docker uh, image to run. And then if you want to add some environment variables, you can say repo user. There's a username, repo password. So, so depending on if you're trying to log into a specific re repository, you can actually grab some of that information as well. Um, you can also do some things with email. There's just, there's a lot that you can really run with this. Um, so when you get into the notifications section down here, it'll talk about how to, how to set up email or Slack and, and things like that. Um, so this can actually email you to let you know, hey, I updated it or there's an update available just depending on how you set it up. So you can see there's quite a few more, uh, there's quite a few more environment variables here that are available for you to set up to do email. This shows you an example for Gmail. I always kind of suggest against Gmail because their security is, is good, but it also makes it a pain to use them as an SMTP provider. It's better if you have your own SMTP server. 
When you start talking about container selection, it's really important to understand how to exclude containers or to set them as monitor only, which means if you exclude it, Watchtower won't even look at it. It won't care. It's just going to be left out. But by default, Watchtower is going to watch all of the containers on the host system or on the Docker system that you're running the Watchtower on. So you need to be aware of this. You can fully exclude them by putting this label, which is com.centurylinklabs.watchtower.enable equals false. So that will exclude that container, which means Watchtower will ignore it. The other option that you have is monitor only. So whenever you look at monitor only, this really means I just wanted to monitor this, this image or this container for updates and let me know when those are available. So you can set this label on those containers, which is com.centurylinklabs.watchtower.monitor-only equals true. So that's what I'll do on most of my containers because I do want to know when there's updates available, but I don't want Watchtower to actually update them for me. So before we actually install Watchtower, we want to go out and actually say, okay, I want to make sure that before I do this, I've got my containers set up to not be automatically updated. So I've only got a couple of containers running on this system. And you can see one is actually Portainer itself and the other one is Mesh Central. So for Portainer, I, I don't really mind if it gets uh, run again. So I'm just going to leave it without the flag on it. But on the Mesh Central, I'd rather know what it's going to do and, and, and get a notification when it gets updated. So inside of Portainer, you can just click on the actual container you want to uh, adjust. And then click over here on the little edit duplicate button and once you're in edit and duplicate mode you'll go down here to the bottom and you'll see there's this little labels section and here this one has a few labels already so we're just going to add one more and i'm going to set that as com dot center labs dot watch tower dot monitor only and I'm going to make that true so <clears throat> I filled out the actual label here and the value over here on the right and now that I've got that I can actually go up here and I can tell it okay now restart this container and yes replace it all right it looks like mesh central should be back up and running let me just double check that it is and it is great so we've got that set up and running, and now we want to actually add our container for um, for Watchtower. You can see here that they have several different ways of getting notifications. They have email, Slack, Microsoft Teams, Gotify, and Shouter, which I think is a container you run, but then it sends it through Slack. I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into it. Might be something to do in a future video. So here you can see all of the things we want for email. So that's what I'm going to set up today. And here's a Docker run example that we can actually check out. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to copy it. So we're connected to our server where we're running Docker. If we do Docker PS, we can see what we've got running there. And we can clear this. And now we can do paste. And then I always do a control C. And then I hit the up arrow get rid of these things I got to add the last uh, last bit back here so we're just gonna go back and we're gonna fill in all of these uh, variables here so you can see here it's already got set notifications for email and then watchtower notification email from so this is what you want to put as your from email so we'll just get rid of the Gmail placeholder here that they've got and this will be Brian at fix notification email too. So this can be the same email address. It doesn't have to be a separate email address, but you can use different email addresses if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to put the same email address for both. Um, the server in my case is uh, that. And then we're going to go out here and put the port is 587. That is correct. And then email server user. So depending on your server setup and your and your email setup, uh, you basically just do uh, usually the same uh, email address. It could just be the username, just depending on what you're using for email. And here I'm going to put my password, and that should be everything that we need to get this up and running. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter. Um, I will of course be blurring out my password, uh, and once it's up and running, we'll check and see how it looks. Didn't take long. 
we can do a Docker PS, and it looks like Watchtower is still currently running. It's only been up for about eight seconds, but we can do that again. 16 seconds, so it looks like it's actually up and running. We can go over to Portainer. We can do a little refresh here, and we've got Watchtower. It says that it's running. We can even check our logs here, check our status. All right, so right off the bat, it did send an email. So I've got the email here, and it says Watchtower Updates, and it says on 64F0. So this is the ID of the actual thing. But it says, using notifications, SMTP, checking all containers, except explicitly dislabeled with this label, scheduling first run on 512. So it'll run uh, tomorrow, and it's going to run at 0000, 000 UTC. Um, so 1654, basically 4.4. .4 454 which is a few hours ahead of me I didn't set the time zone so I could go back and do that actually to run it more correctly and it says you know note that the first check will be performed in 24 hours essentially so tomorrow and it'll run the first check so instead of waiting 24 hours I want to schedule this to run let's say every hour all right so we're gonna stop this container we'll do docker stop watch tower docker rm watch tower so we'll just do a docker ps and we see the watch tower is not there anymore we can do a docker psa i think dash a and still nothing so that's good so we're going to go back to that docker command that we ran earlier all right so we're going to go in and we're going to set up an actual schedule uh, on watch tower so if we go back to the documentation you can see that here they've got scheduling and they tell you that they use the six digit cron syntax instead of the five digit Right here it says that you can use an argument. Uh, I've not had a lot of luck with arguments uh, inside of Docker Run, so we're actually going to use this one here that sets up an environment variable, and it's called watchtower underscore schedule. So we'll set that environment variable in our command, and then we'll set it, and we're going to try to set it to run every hour. So we'll kind of go back to that and set it. Um, in fact, we could try to do it every five minutes. Why don't we start with that and see how that goes. So we'll go back to our command here, and I'm going to put hyphen E watch tower underscore schedule and then we'll put equals and I'm gonna put zero slash five and then star space star space star space star space star so that's six spaces or six actual digits I guess you'd say in our cron here for the six character cron and then I'm gonna press enter and it gives us the ID so we can go back to our portainer and we can refresh and it looks like it's running. Let's check our logs here. Uh, looks like everything's running. So using this syntax with the star slash five, we've set it up to run every five minutes, essentially. So you can use zero for the seconds and then star slash five and then star for each one of the positions after that out to six. And then I did set the time zone to America, Chicago, just so that I would get the times and, and the times that I'm expecting. And here you can see on the email that we got, it says that it's going to go off at 1340 and it's now, you know, 1337. So you can see that we do have this thing running where it's going to run every five minutes. It's going to check. It's going to see if there's anything new. But until there's something new, it's not going to notify us again. It's not going to tell us every time that it runs. It's just going to tell us when there's something new. The issue is I only have one container on this Portainer instance, so we're probably not going to see anything or one container that I expected to update on this Portainer instance and it doesn't have an update ready so it's not going to show anything. So now I'm going to get brave and I'm going to go back and I'm going to copy this command exactly as it is and I'm going to log into my other server. So you can see on this server I've got quite a few more containers running so we're going to go in and actually set a few of these with the label to monitor only or to just let it update or to exclude it and then we'll, we'll run Watchtower again and see what we get out of that. So I'm going to go through the same process. Um, I can go here into my Portainer instance, and I can just go to my local. And here's my containers that are running. Um, I've got 11 of them running right now. Now, some of these are multi-part containers, so that may be, again, where you want to go in and put something in, in the way so it doesn't actually run anything there. Um, but we're going to go and we're going to look at Nginx Proxy Manager. We'll check out GoDaddy DDNS, which I'll talk about that one in another video. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, We've got Portainer itself, we've got Chow, we've got Matomo, uh, Metabase, Glances, and Apache all running. So some of those may need some updates, so we're going to find out. So just like before, we're going to go back and we're going to set up uh, 
So first thing I'm going to do is actually paste in my my command so I don't lose it. And it's going to run. So it's going to run everything. I, I had an enter character there. So it's running. It's already going. It's going to do its thing. So we'll just see what we get out of it here in just a minute. Um, it's going to run in five minutes actually. So I've got a little time to go put some labels on some things. So let's go back to um, where we want to actually look at notifications. Um, container selection we're gonna go here and look and we can say you know this label exclude enable equals false we can set that on any we don't want it to update so let's go do that one first we'll just copy it and we'll go back to our portainer and for instance I don't really want it to update nginx proxy manager because that's running some really important stuff so we've got the app and the DB so I'm just gonna click into it I'm gonna hit edit and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to add this as a label at the bottom. And we'll just add another label. I'll paste that in there. And then I'll just set the value to false. And we'll redeploy this guy. And then we'll go back to our containers. We'll let that finish. And we'll do the same thing on the DB. And again, we'll redeploy. Now we may have to restart these here in just a minute to get them to work correctly, but we'll see how it, do, how it goes. There we go. And it looks like everything's up and running there. And we'll go to, let's see, Watchtower. So it says it found a new version of uh, GoDaddy DDNS updater. Uh, it did find Nginx Proxy Manager. And it did find Matomo. So it's checking all of them and it's looking. Um, I'm guessing it's going to go and actually update these things and start them running again. So it's already kind of running, but you can see here in the in the output log what's going on. So it's stopping Apache, it's stopping Glances, it's stopping Metabase, and it's stopping uh, Matomo, stopping Nginx Proxy Manager. But it says error response from the daemon uh, cannot kill container and whatever that is. So we'll see what happens there. So it's starting these back up. Error response from the dam. So Nginx Proxy Manager is giving it a little bit of trouble. Uh, Matomo, Metabase, Glances, and Apache all look like they have restarted successfully. So let's go back to our container home. Let's check out Nginx Proxy Manager, make sure it's actually running. Let's just uh, refresh here. Looks like it's running okay. Doesn't seem like it got messed with. It says healthy. That's good. Apache. Looks like it might have been updated and I got an email. So let's click into our email here. And there we go. We get an output of the logs for what Watchtower did. And we can kind of check that out and see what's going on. So here it says it cannot kill the container Nginx proxy manager. So it didn't allow it to do that, which maybe that's a good thing, maybe it's not. But I've gone ahead and put in the exception so in the future when it runs it won't even check that one, which is great. All of the other ones it found uh, some updates for and it updated them. So let's go check them out and let's make sure everything looks like it's running. Um, so let's see here. Uh, Matomo, so that's my analytics website. So we'll do analytics.routemehome.org. Everything's looking good there. So great. Doesn't look like it really hurt it to, to get that update, which is awesome. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And looking like this is probably going to work fine. Yep, all of my music appears to be here. No problems there. Great. So that's good. And Chow is up and running still. Looks like everything's good. It's all got 200s. That's great. I've only got three sites that I monitor, but Chow is up and running. Excellent. Let's check Metabase. That one is uh, definitely something special. It looks like it's running. We just have to make sure we can log in. Looks good. Yeah. Everything looks good from that standpoint, so great. It looks like Watchtower worked without a problem. This is kind of exciting. I've never really messed with Watchtower before, but I'm going to go through and put in the monitor only on a lot of my containers now. Um, but that's really the end of it. 
Uh, Watchtower looks really great. I wanted to open up some channels for discussion, so I've created this Rocket Chat server, and I've got it mixed up with Jitsi Meet. I've created a few channels already to start up some discussions, but of course we can always open up more channels. If you'd like to jump in and send me a direct message or just ask a question on one of the channels, I'll be monitoring the system. It'll be up and running. I'm going to leave this up and going so that we can have a place where we can all come together and answer each other's questions and have good discussions and good conversations. It's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. Again, that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. I'll have the links in the show notes and the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.